the show of the week. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say about this. Hello and welcome to Show of the Week, the weekly segment where we talk musical theater and where it's a little too hot for me to be wearing flannel right now. So I'm making my way through all of the Broadway shows that did not have their cast albums out in time for the Tony Awards. And that means this week we're going to talk about The Visit, the musical. Now, it's a little disappointing. Immediate qualification. I really enjoyed listening to it. It just... Well, it didn't quite live up to the expectations I had set for myself about it, which may actually say more about the expectations I set about musicals and less about the musical itself, but, you know, that's beside the point. There are pretty much two main things that bother me about this cast album and this musical. The first is that, well, all of the songs are really similar sounding, and none of them are, well, none of them are terribly catchy. And not that every song in a musical has to be catchy, but it's, well, it's nice to leave the theater humming at least one of the tunes. And I know previous Kandranev shows that do that. The Visit just, it doesn't seem to live up to that. And here's the second thing that bothers me. The Visit is a musical about a secret. A lot of popular stories and popular entertainment that we create is about it's about keeping a secret, and are we keeping a secret from the audience? Are we keeping a secret from the character? Where does that secret stand? Does the audience know the secret and the characters on stage not know the secret? Uh, in The Visit, one of the characters on stage, Claire, knows the secret, and then really the bulk of the play is how that secret is released to both the characters and the audience. And that's where the drama comes from, and that's where the tension comes from, and that's where some of the comedy comes from. But it's important to keep that secret very tenderly. There's an old playwriting adage called Chekhov's gun. Anton Chekhov had said, if you put a gun on the wall of the parlor in act one, you must be sure it goes off in Act 2. Now, Chekhov was talking kind of about the completeness of a story. Don't add anything extra to your story. But I think that also speaks to the tenderness with which we must keep secrets on stage. If the gun is not on the wall in Act 1, and then a gun goes off in Act 2, that's out of left field and you're not expecting it. But if we put the gun on the wall in Act 1 and they're like, oh, there's a gun on the wall. I hope it doesn't go off later. That kind of kills some of the, pro the surprise in Act 2. And this is the problem, I think, with the visit's secret keeping. Whenever something mysterious happens, whenever something that's filled with subtext happens, the underscoring it pretty much goes dun 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 in its own special way. There's something dissonant or something creepy about it, and while once or twice can certainly let the audience in a little bit when it happens every time Claire insinuates something, you end up with, you know, well, yeah, we get it. She's got ulterior motives. Let's get on with it. And that just kind of ruins some of the fun. You should go listen to The Visit anyway, because there's some great songs in it, and who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I already knew the plot when I went in to go listen to it, and so I had already assumed, and maybe you'll have a different listen. You should tell me about that down in the, in the, in the comments, uh, because I love, absolutely love, hearing about things like that, and I try to reply to all of them. So, you know, listen to The Visit. Tell me what you thought. That's all I've got for you, and I will see you next week. Yeah, fingers, 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 fingers. I don't know what that was. That'll work.